how to make a practical use of the Archimedean spiral. Let us consider the moment of emotion in these points. The radius here is maximum. The moment of inertia with this radius is maximum. Yes. What is the angular velocity at the moment of the swing? Maximum. Oh, a minimum. At the moment of the swing. What is the angular velocity? The moment of the swing when the radius is large, as I've just said. Look, let this radius here be the second one. That one is the first, this one is the second. In this case, the radius is smaller, as the angular velocity is higher. Am I right? In this case, the angular velocity is a little bit higher. As we assume this, then in this place the velocity will be even higher, and the radius smaller. In this point, the radius, that would be the fourth, will be minimal. The radius is minimal, and the angular velocity, maximum. Maximum. You saw that in the midpoint of turning this rod, the velocity is maximum. We've got the idea. Keep this in mind when you bash like this or like this. Or just vertically down. You can see the difference. In this case, the angular velocity is minimal, and it is visible. In rotation of any object, the circle will equal two times the radius. You've got a gearbox principle, the same wedge we've talked about. These laws of physics, rules of geometry, help you to grasp something about motion. You get the core of it, the help of the simple scheme, Archimedean spiral, volume of Descartes, learning the laws of Newton, Lagrande and Bernoulli, you can understand much more about it. Now to the middle guys, to the middle. Come here, take a stick. We've just seen it. Give me a direct hit. I rotated my stick and to some extent managed to slow down the speed of your stick and moved along it. What do we have? I've got you. What will happen if you continue? I just step aside freely when you're still under attack. You have to understand this. You can see my object rotating in the shape of the spiral, creating a cut of wedge. In this case, however, if we put a focal point in here, that would be point one. Let's join these points. There it goes. We've got a semicon. There is a full cone. We have a translated cone. It is translated somehow. This is the way the movement, the work goes, as you can see, if we draw it. Once again, attack me. Look, I don't counterattack. I rotate it. I can rotate further according to the law of leverage. I hit him here. Look what happens. I can continue hitting like this and like that. Both arms and legs are at work. After we discuss these points, those exercises on the floor can be seen differently. You can apply them to yourself, to your body, and to the possible weapon in your hands. Attack me once again. What's my objective? I rotate, and there it is. I can hit, hit, hit without stepping aside, 
and I can just knock off his stick. I use, as you can see, these points, the knowledge of them. Parts of the machine, mechanics, statics, kinematics, dynamics, which were just brushed up on in the beginning, now can be seriously applied to solve problems. I hit him. He defends, but he gave me a fulcrum. I passed around him, and he still received a beating. We've done work on both sides. We circulate between exercises on the floor, benches and the floor again, then benches from a general to the specific, from the specific to the general, as Akady Alexeyevich said. Any questions? No questions. Even if we take something completely different, for example, the core will be the same. Where are the shields? For example, there is a shield, so that you guys can compare. Take a knife. I work with a shield. Take the sheath. Let it be sheathed. Of course, there is no need in using it. It's just an example. I shield myself, and he puts the knife into the holes and rotates it. Look, I'm defenseless. He can now hit me with the handle or throw me down. Look what happens to me. Hold it. Now, if we are prepared for this situation, I sit down. Look what happens. I sat down. Look what I do with my knee. Look how it works. I rotate freely and hit him.